All right, anaximenes, um, possibly an associate of an examiner. What that means is he was younger. All right, he might have hung out with him, but he was a, 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 you know younger, socially subordinate kind of individual. All right, uh, but uh, he possibly hung out with an examiner. Okay, or, or, I'm sorry, I said possibly. He most likely was. It appears that we we have enough data to affirm that. Um, okay, he argues all his air has no limits and never dies. Okay, so once again that balance. He hung out with Anaximander. He picked up, and this is what I want you to see, is that early Greek thought, you see some progression. People pick up on what somebody else said, or they modify, they tweak it. They say, yeah, but, you know, or I'll go with that, but also this. You, know, you see these kind of uh, uh, adding to building on what they learned from someone else. And that's what we certainly see with the Anaximenes, is that there's a building on or a modification of what he had obviously already been exposed to. Okay, but he says, no, nah, I don't think it's water, as we saw with Thales. And uh, he comes up with the, the one, it's that, once again, we're looking at what's everything made out of, okay? That kind of uh, basic uh, question of what's, what's the stuff in the universe? Uh, he thinks that all is air. It has no limits and never dies. But all is air. Now, maybe he was starting to get on to something a little more. Because if you think about it logically for just a second, we know scientifically now, way, way later, you know, 2,500 or so years later, uh, we know that everything's made out of what? I mean, atoms. Right. And then below that, subtomic particles, below that, yes. quarks, right? And I don't know what the new thing is. But, uh, you know, quarks was the last I heard, okay? Um, so, so we've got, you know, atoms, subtomic particles, everything basically, you know, those basic building blocks are atoms. And by the way, we're not the first people to think about that, and we're going to see that in a minute. But, um, but they couldn't look at it. They didn't have electron microscopes, okay? But they had that concept of, there's something that makes up all this that is not seen by the naked eye. And maybe he's getting on to something here. Maybe he's picking up on that. That You know, wait a minute. I can see water being made out of air, but I can't see air being made out of water. Maybe he picked up on that. All right? Okay. His empirical research led him to believe that what is alive breathes and has a soul, uh, and, and this must be true of the cosmos. So he kind of takes from a, a particular and goes to a universal, all right? And here's an argument. Um, basically, what happens to the smallest creature must also happen on a greater level. And the example is condensation of air creates water, and then, you know, snow, and then ice. That's a going backwards with it. It kind of builds. Condensation, you know, your, co your, your Coca-Cola gets uh, condensation on the glass. Well, that came out of where? Out of the air, right? So he sees this as kind of, Okay, kind of a way of uh, likening to what's going on in the universe. Okay, uh, like Thales, Anaximenes believed that the earth rested on something, but his is air. And I just emphasize that from the top here. It, it rests on something, the universe rests on something, but it's air. So we're floating on air. Like Anybody seen the movie Sky High? Seen that? No. Kind of a kid's movie. But... Yeah. All right. Yeah, they, they were. <laughs> They were floating in the high school and superheroes, they're all floating in the air. They're all the high school floats in the air. Alright. Alright, well. Everybody got it? Okay. Let's talk about Xenophanes. And I, I think for extra credit, I'm just going to make you pronounce these names, but I won't do that to you. Okay. Xenophanes, a traveler and Roman poet, born in Colophon. Once again, that part of the world over there. Okay. That GN area. Okay. It may have been the teacher of Parmenides, and uh, we'll talk about him in a minute. Interests of poetry, once again, as always, respected by the Greeks, of uh, religion and natural philosophy. Okay, he's the first to try to discredit the gods. So he's getting out there, he's sticking his neck out a little bit, alright? Now he's gonna he's gonna uh, you know possibly uh, be in danger of some social repercussions, but he's challenging it. He says, humans project their thoughts and actions onto the gods. Well, if you study the ancient Greek uh, you know, mythology, uh, 
you know, we get our some of our, our modern terms like narcissistic, right? Where does that come from? Narcissist who is a figure that acts like a narcissistic person, basically, all right? The epitome of one, okay? And so you can see where, uh, you know, in Homer's writings, that these, these uh, people that, you know, Apollos and all these different uh, uh, folks that are, are uh, mentioned in the, in the writings of the Iliad and the Odyssey, uh, their characters are uh, really human, very human uh, reflection, very humanistic reflections uh, that usually emphasize a particular uh, thing. You know, tantalus is another uh, one, and uh, we'll get a term tantalized. Uh, so you see that. He, he started picking up on that. that. Hey, I think these are all invented gods and somebody projected, you know, they look a little too too much like my dysfunctional family, basically. It's kind of where he goes with that, all right? Okay. Okay, so he argues that humans project their thoughts and actions on the gods. Humans have knowledge from experience. Perception is different for each culture. So he's picking up on that. You know, those Eastern folks just don't think the way we do. Okay. He's picking up on this stuff um, and uh, realizes that there are very different perceptions about the, the, the world, about the, you know, the universe from other cultures. All right. So he's a little bit of a sociologist too, isn't he? Uh, he's kind of getting over into that realm a little bit. So again, a broad interest. Okay. Any questions about xenophony? There's only so much we know about these guys. There's not a whole lot of questions I can probably answer, frankly. But, you know, uh, if you do have some, I'll be glad to attempt that. Okay, Pythagoras was the leader of a popular religious cult named after him. Uh, anybody heard of the Pythagorean theorem? If you took geometry, you have. Okay, that's this guy. Pythagoras, Pythagorean theorem. He was a really smart guy. Okay. Um, have you ever thought about that? Somebody sat around and invented that stuff that's already difficult enough to learn? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, he's one of those guys that came up with some things. All right. He was the leader of a, also of a religious cult that was named after him, the Pythagorean Brotherhood. All right. Uh, he lived a very regimented life in, once again, uh, Croton, Italy. Uh, he believed in reincarnation and the transmigration of the soul. So he has a very, very strong religious element to his beliefs. He's not just a great mathematician, uh, geometrist, you know, great at geometry. Uh, but he's got a lot of other things going, and that's really his main emphasis is his religious life. Now, for him, he believed that there's reincarnation, and he believed that your soul transmigrates, and it goes, you know, comes back around. Uh, but basically, he says that the soul is immortal, and humans can reunite, reunite with the divine by perfecting or purifying himself. And that's why he lives such a regimented life. That's why he lived a very disciplined life. Uh, he says that incarnation is a punishment for bad things that you do. So, you know, you get that. You get to come back and try again, okay? Because you weren't good enough. You didn't get it right, All right? Okay, his main argument is that the world is a place of order. That order comes from numbers. And he certainly was an expert in that stuff. Okay, he, he studied math and furthered the study of geometry. Again, Pythagorean theorem. It's named after this guy. Any questions about 